Hey, what's up guys? So in this video, I'm gonna be covering how to make a save and load system. So this system is essentially going to save any values which you want persistent between different play sessions of your game. Now, I do wanna mention this is not a resource saving system. I know there's a ton of controversy around this topic in the Godot community, and it is for good reason, one of the most uh, controversial topics for a few reasons, but I'll go over that really quick here and then we'll get into the code and how to actually set this up. So a while ago, I covered how to save all sorts of data inside of custom resources. Now, custom resources, if you don't know, are just generic scripts that inherit from resource. So inside of custom resources, you can put things like properties, so any variables or exports that you might have, and then you can also put functions inside of them. Now, a lot of you guys were commenting on that video saying that it is not safe to do this method, and that does make sense because if you think about it, um, let's say the player downloaded something from, let's say the Steam Workshop, if you released your game on Steam, or let's say you downloaded a player save file for unlocking some sort of content without having to grind and progress yourself, which a lot of people do, then you have a potential security risk for hackers, so to speak, placing malicious code inside of that resource. And because Godot will just load the resource up and run it no matter what, that's obviously a huge security risk. So in this system, we're going to be basically converting any resource data or just basic properties that we'd want to save into JSON format. And this way it's stored as just a basic JSON file and we can convert all the values back into their specific locations where we store the values in their properties. So that's just a brief overview. I'll cover some of the more um, pros and cons later on in the video, um, but we'll just get right into making this quick. So you'll see right here, I have a basic scene set up. We just have our game and we have a control node that contains a save button and a load button. So we just have these buttons here so that it's easier to test, obviously. We're just going to connect them to our main game script up here and these will activate the functions required to save and load so go into the save button i'm just going to connect this with pressed to our game script and then same thing for the load button just connect pressed to the game script and then we have these two functions and we're just gonna put these down at the bottom. And we basically need to make some properties up at the top. We're gonna have three constants. So our first constant is gonna be called save directory. And we're gonna set this equal to user. Um, we're gonna go into a saves folder that we're gonna create and then type a forward slash at the end. So this will be a directory. And then we're also going to make another constant. This will be the save file name and we're going to set this equal to save.json. Now if you don't know we're going to save all of our files into the user folder. Um, the user folder means we can read and write our files during runtime. If we save into the resource folder we won't be able to write anything during runtime so that's why we always put our saves into the user folder. So you can actually open this folder and we're gonna to want to do that for testing. So we're gonna go up to project and say open user data folder. And this will open our file manager inside of this project's folder. So back in Godot, we're gonna make one more constant and this one is going to be called security key. We're just gonna set this equal to a random string for now. So I'm just gonna type some random numbers and letters and whatever, and this will be the key which we require to actually decode our file when we save and load it. Now there is one thing to note, for this tutorial, I'm just gonna put the security key right inside of the script so that we can just have all of our references right here. But obviously you don't wanna have the security key in the same place as your save and load functions, because at that point there's really no reason to have a key if someone who's trying to hack the game would just be able to see it right here. So basically where you store this is an entirely different topic. It really boils down to your preference and how in depth you want to make the security for this game. And you might eventually even wanna link it to some sort of a server or like an account a player uses if you are making an online or multiplayer game. But it is good to note that um, this just provides an extra level of security. And even though it is pretty secure with the security key, you won't ever be able to make something 100% secure. And that's because technically to some point, like 99% of things are hackable and someone with enough willpower will just be able to go into your script and find all the connections between things and eventually um, get into the code of your game if they really try hard enough. 
And that's why even AAA game studios nowadays still have trouble with people modding their games and hacking it and stuff. Just keep in mind that we're we're basically putting on a level of security that the average person won't be able to just open up their save file with a text editor and change stuff. Everything's going to be encoded, obviously, so it makes it really hard for just a generic user to actually edit their save. Um, that was a kind of long explanation, but that is really important to note. Okay, and then after that, we're gonna make a basic variable. We're gonna make one called player data. This will basically store our active player data, and then you'll be able to link this to your player scene, and we'll be able to change everything based on a resource. And the way we're gonna do that, we're gonna make a new folder down here. We're gonna call this, we'll just make it resources for now, and we're gonna make a new script inside of here. We're actually gonna just name it player data, and when we create it, we want to open it up, and we're gonna make sure it extends from resource. And then we're going to type class name and set the class name to player data. And now inside of our game script, when we initialize our player data variable, we can just set it equal to a new player data by calling player data dot new. Now we're going to set up the player data really quick with some properties that we might want to save. So inside of that script again, we're going to go up at the top and we're going to say export var let's do health and we'll set this equal to 100 we'll do another export var let's do global position um, we'll set this equal to a vector 2.0 and this is another thing we'll want to note later when we actually save everything into a json file and then one more export variable this one could be maybe the amount of coins we have and we'll set it equal to like 25. Make sure to save this. We'll go back into our game script. And when the game starts, we want to verify that our save directory actually exists. So we're going to say function underscore ready. And we're going to write verify save directory. And inside of here, we're just going to pass in our save directory path. And we need to define this function right down here. So we're going to say function verify save directory. It will require a path, which is a string. And inside of here, all we need to do is say directory access dot make directory absolute. And we're going to pass in the path for the argument here. And this will essentially just make sure that the path exists here so that we can access it later. Now that's all we'll need in the ready function for now, but I'm going to make a couple more functions right here. We're going to need two more pretty long ones. So the first one is going to be actually saving the data. So we're going to write function save data, and this will require a path which is a string. And inside of here, we first need to open a new file. So we're gonna write var file equals file access dot. We're gonna say open encrypted with pass. And all we need to do is pass in the path. And then we need to pass in file access dot write. And then for the last one will be our security key. After that line, we just need to check if we got an error. So we can do that by checking if file equals null then we're going to basically print file access dot get open error and this will give us the error if there is one and then after that we just want to make sure to return so we cancel all further processing and the next up we need to essentially structure all of our data inside of a dictionary and this is what's going to be put into JSON format so that we can actually save it to a file because right now all of our data is inside of these export variables and we just want to extract it and organize it correctly. So we're gonna make a new variable. This will be our temporary data variable and it'll be a dictionary. And inside of here, we're gonna make a key which is gonna be called player data. And this will just be another dictionary. We're going to basically redefine all of the properties we have set in the player data class. And that is health, global position and coins. So we're gonna retype those. First one will be health equal to player data dot health. And the next one is going to be global position. And this one's a bit different because JSON files can't actually store vectors. We're going to need to store the X and the Y position as separate blocks. So this will just be another dictionary. And inside of here, we're gonna put the X position as player data dot global position dot X, the Y position 
to player data dot global position dot y. And then after the global position, we want to do coin equal to player data dot coins. So we've basically defined how our dictionary is going to be structured. And then all we have to do after that is make sure to store this variable as a JSON file. And we can do that with a few lines here. So we're first going to declare a new variable. This will be a JSON string, and this will be set to JSON dot stringify and we're basically going to convert this data variable into a string and then for the second argument this will be the separator and we're going to pass in backslash t and this will basically put a tab on any new lines so it'll format it correctly and make it easier to read when we're actually looking at the file and then we need to say file dot store string and the string which we will store is the JSON string. And then lastly, we wanna make sure to say file.close so that we are closing out of this file. Now next up, we'll add the functionality to actually load the file back into our data. So we're gonna say function, and this will be called load data, and this will require a path as well, which is a string. So inside of the load data function, we first wanna check if the file exists and that will determine if we can load it obviously. So we're gonna say if file access dot file exists and then we'll pass in the path. And if it does, we will continue to load as usual, but we'll pass for now and say, otherwise we're going to print this error, which just says cannot open the non-existent file at percent %s and this will basically be the path here. Um, but inside of our main block up here, we're going to replace this pass with our logic, which is starting out with the same thing as above, where we just say var file equals file access dot open encrypted with pass, and we'll do the path file access dot read, we're gonna pass in our security key. And after that, we're gonna check for errors again. So we'll say if file equals null, then we're going to print file access dot get open error and then make sure to return after that. And next up, we basically need to assign our file content to a variable in a text format, and then we can parse it with the JSON class. So we're going to say var content is equal to file dot get as text. And then after we do that, we have to call file dot close. And then down at the bottom, we need to parse it. So we're gonna say var data equals json dot parse string. And we're gonna parse content, which is the string that we just got out of our file. And after it's parsed, then we can check if it's equal to null. So we'll say if data is null, then we're gonna print another error here, which is just cannot parse the path as a JSON string, which is our content. And then just make sure to return once more. And lastly, now that we have all the data, assuming that it got parsed here, we can simply assign it to our local player data variable. So this is the part where you might want to create either a separate function for this, or you could also create something like a function inside of each object that you're saving that basically gets a list of all the properties that you want to save and then returns it. So you could just iterate through all your objects and save stuff quick. But there is definitely a more efficient way to do this. But for this tutorial, I'm just gonna keep everything inside of the script for simplicity purposes. But basically what we need to do is assign our player data to, to a new player data with player data dot new. And then we just fill out all the properties with everything that we've loaded in. So we're gonna say, player data dot health is equal to our data that we parsed dot player data dot health player data dot global position is equal to a vector two and the first float is going to be our data dot player data dot global position dot x and then the second one is just the same thing but obviously dot y for the y position and then lastly we're going to say player data dot coins and set this equal to data dot player data dot coins and this block will basically assign all of our loaded data into our actual game resource so that the player can use it easily now finally, we just need to connect the buttons to actually activate these functions. So when the save button is pressed, we're gonna call save data. And the path is going to be the save directory plus the save file name. 
and we're going to copy this entire thing, paste it into the load press, but instead of save, we're going to just write load, and now everything should work correctly, so let's go ahead and test this. So I have this window always on top, so it's easier for testing, but I'm going to go into the remote tab on the left and click on the game, which is where we stored all of our data. And on the right hand side in the inspector, we're going to go into the player data object. And you can see that we have health 100, global position 0, uh, coins 25, and I'm just going to save this. So if we go ahead and open this folder up, I'm just going to move this to the side. We can see that we have a saves folder that the game created for us open that up when we have our save.json. Now, if I open this up with a text editor, you can see that everything is encoded, so it's basically impossible for the player to actually identify what is going on here, and this makes your game a lot harder to hack or change any values, but we're going to test the loading functionality as well. So we're going to, inside of the remote tab again, make sure you're on the game, go into our player resource, and we're just gonna change our health to something like 20 and change our coins to like 99, and we're gonna edit the position maybe. But let's say we just wanted to load from our last save, so we're gonna click the load button, and if we go back into the game, we need to kind of refresh everything, go back into the player object, you can see that we reverted back to our previous save, which is all working correctly, obviously. But yeah, that's about it for this system. I did wanna mention a couple things. So first of all, this system is generally superior to using just the resource saver to save all of your custom resources because of the security aspect. Now, I know this is a really big deal to a lot of people, so typically you'd want to use this system or at least something similar. But then again, if you are making something like a single player game where the player won't really be as oriented to download save files from online sources and also you won't really be interacting with other players data then something like this is definitely optional because there is a huge benefit to using custom resources to save things that being that they're just way easier to work with instead of having this giant block right here where you have to manually kind of go through and assign all of your properties to their correct places you can simply load the resource and everything just works. So there are a couple things to consider as shown. Now there is also one more workaround that I thought was interesting, but when I was doing research for this video, I saw that somebody was actually opening their custom resource files as text and then just iterating through it and searching for anything that could maybe trigger malicious code, such as like the function keyword, and then if it contained that, then you would just reject the file, and you wouldn't even give Godot the chance to actually open and run it. So that was kind of an interesting way to look at it. I don't know how well that would work in the long run, since a lot of times your custom resources contain their own functions anyway, so it might be kind of a really tedious thing to work with, but just kind of an idea if you're looking for an alternate solution. But that'll do it for this video, so if you learned anything new or enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, and if you want to subscribe and help the channel out, it would really mean a lot to me. And then lastly, I would like to mention that we have a community Discord channel. If you want to join a pretty chill server with some like-minded game developers, then go ahead and check that out. I'll put the link in the description. But that'll do it for this video, so thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.